The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Good day and welcome to this distance learning session with me, Chamaze Arnold Akepu. I will be teaching you history in the lower six class. To proceed with our lesson of today, it is important for us to do a correction of the homework which we had in the last lesson. It required us, it required you to name and situate on a map of Cameroon, precisely pre-colonial Cameroon, five states and kingdoms that emerged in the 19th century. Five states and kingdoms that emerged in the 19th century as a result of migrations, population movements. I hope we all did our homework. So some of these pre-colonial states and kingdoms that emerged as a result of pre-colonial migrations in Cameroon included the Lameda, which are found in the northern part of Cameroon, like Gaoundere, the Kong Kingdom, the Bakwere Kingdoms, the So Kingdom, the Bafu Kingdom, the Mankon Kingdom, the Awondo and the Bane Kingdoms, the Bamum Sotene, and the Bakosi Kingdoms. These are examples of states and kingdoms which, ex or which emerged in pre-colonial Cameroon as a result of population movements. These ethnic groups migrated from areas which they found uncomfortable to areas which they found safe for settlement. And these settlements resulted to the development of some powerful states and kingdoms which we can reckon with today, like the ones we've highlighted. In this respect, we realize that these states and kingdoms came about as a result of migrations from the northern part of the territory. Most states and kingdoms migrated from the northern part of Cameroon to found settlements in the coastal areas, the western Mbamenda grass fields, the equatorial forest, and the Adamawa plateau, and the savanna regions of the northern, the savanna and Sahara regions of the northern part of Cameroon. So, principally, the migratory trend was from the north to the southern part of the country into the coastal forest area, the equatorial forest area, the western Ambamenda grass fields. These movements resulted to the founding of states and kingdoms like we talk of the Bakosi in the coastal forest, the Bakwere, the Bamum along the grass field areas, the Nso, the Kom within the grass field areas, as you see my pointer, and others. These states and kingdoms develop very powerful and striking uh, systems, social, political, and economic systems, as we can see being represented in these different cultural aspects. For example, we look at the Lamido, well seated, that was an aspect of the northern kingdoms. We look at the well constructed palace found in Fumban by the Bamum, 
we see the Bafood Palace. Here we see back where the chiefs seated, putting on their loincloth, shirts, and caps. We see the fun of Bali seated with some notables. We see Gonzo, the saw ancestor, and we see the forest, the Fang Betty, in their traditional regalia. Whenever we see these twin lakes, we think of the people of the Kupe Manenguba, the Bakosi people. And equally, when we see the elephant dance, we think of the Malay dance, we think of the Bakwere people, the forest people, the coastal forests. These are some of the aspects that developed, that enabled these ethnic groups that migrating to set up powerful states and kingdoms. And why not think of empires? <laughs> This homework was to enable us to effectively begin with our lesson of today, which focuses on the fundamental notions and characteristics of 19th century pop, uh, states and kingdoms in Cameroon. Fundamental notions and characteristics of 19th century states and kingdoms in Cameroon. To proceed with this lesson, we are going to look at our learning objectives, the previous knowledge, the situation in real life, our problem situation, the lesson activities, some exercises, and another homework in preparation of our next lesson. As objectives of this lesson, it is, our objectives of this lesson are double-fold. First of all, to define the notions of pre the notion of pre-colonial states and kingdoms. In other words, what do we understand by pre-colonial states and kingdoms? What were pre-colonial states? What were pre-colonial kingdoms? Do they represent the same things? That's one of our objectives. Secondly, to highlight the peculiarities, that is to say, the characteristics of some of these pre-colonial states and kingdoms that emerged in Cameroon. Remember, they were found in different parts of Cameroon, as we saw on the map, they migrated to different parts of Cameroon, and so developed different cultures, different systems of leadership, and so were similar, but also very different in their existence. Knowledge of population movements in Nigeria Cameroon and some of the kingdoms, as you have already mentioned in your homework, will enable you to effectively follow this lesson till the end and to identify with the objectives we already mentioned. However, the non respect of traditional authorities and the decline of cultural values among young people due to the influence of foreign cultures and the social media is the major situation we have at hand that necessitates us to study or to teach the fundamental notions and the characteristics of 19th century states and kingdoms in Cameroon. This is so because this has created a lot of conflicts within institutions. And what therefore can be done to rebrand the image of our various cultures and to foster the respect for traditional institutions and leaders, which we see declining, decaying as the day goes by as a result of the influence of foreign cultures. In this respect, the resources you will mobilize through this lesson will enable you to assertively justify the existence of well-organized political, economic, and social institutions in pre-colonial Cameroon that resulted to the establishment of powerful states and kingdoms like the Kom, the Bafu, the Mankon, the So, the Bakosi, the Ejagam, and you can name the rest. 
The resources mobilized will equally empower you to promote the teaching of national culture and languages in our schools, especially with the, no, owing to the fact that Cameroon has over 250 identified ethnic groups and national languages. Equally, these resources will enhance your ability to showcase the rich cultural diversity of Cameroon through club activities in the school milieu and beyond. In the school milieu and beyond. To delve into our lesson proper, I would like you to observe this document. After which, you will answer some questions. And that was the Cameroon story. To begin with, what is the nature of the document? Yes, it is a video footage of uh, the over 400 years old palace of the Bafut Kingdom located in the Bamenda grass fields of Cameroon, which is today a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This palace was constructed in pre-colonial Cameroon before contact with the Western world or foreign invaders. And it has stood the taste of time. And today it is a UNESCO World Heritage Center or site. To continue, I would like you to use elements from the document we just observed to construct an appropriate definition of pre-colonial states and kingdoms in Cameroon. In other words, from your observation of the video footage, what do you understand by pre-colonial states and kingdoms in Cameroon? Yes, from the footage, we could see an organized pre-colonial community. And obviously, this community had defined boundaries, that is territoriality, sovereign or an independent administration, which could have coordinated such activities, a well-organized judicial and legislative institutions, systems of leadership as well as succession and varied leadership nomenclature 
these kingdoms had different ways of representing their leaders. In this slide, therefore, pre-colonial states and kingdoms in Cameroon could be presented as organized settlements of indigenous communities with defined boundaries, sovereign leadership, judicial and legislative institutions with distinct systems of leadership succession, succession existing in Cameroon before contact with Western colonizers. Take note, defined boundaries, sovereign leadership, judicial and legislative institutions, distinct systems of leadership and succession patterns. It is these characteristics that warranted these human settlements to be classified as states and kingdoms because they were, they had attributes of current, of modern or the Westphalian state system like we have today. Even though they existed before contact with the Western world. Examples of these pre-colonial states and kingdoms included we have the Lamidat, some of them found in the northern part of the country today, like the Lamidat of Ngaundere, Rebuba, Banyo, and the leaders of the Lamidat was called the Lamido. They come, who called the Arula, the Foin, Foin. The Basa, who talk of Bombo or Kambo. We talk of the Saw, who talk about the Fon. We talk of the Bafu, who talk about, who called the Adida, the Foin, Fon. The Ejagam, and Swifam, the Bafo, and Fon. The Bamu, the Sultan. And we talk of the Bali, and Fon. These are examples of pre-colonial states and kingdoms and the different leadership nomenclature they develop. We may call them kingdoms, fundoms, chiefdoms, but however, indigenously and within their own cultural systems, they had distinct names to which they called their leaders. These states and kingdoms, like we earlier on saw, migrated from the northern part of the country to the coastal areas, developing powerful traits culturally, socially, economically, like we earlier on saw. We see a well centralized or a very powerful form of the Bali. We see a very powerful Lamido. We see a very wonderful edifice here constructed in pre-colonial Cameroon or constructed by the Bamum. We see another architectural masterpiece by the Bafu in pre-colonial Cameroon. We see the coastal forest chiefs seated there. We see the Fangbeti. What about the carvings of the saw representing their ancestor Gonso? These aspects depict different states and kingdoms which emerged in pre-colonial Cameroon, like you identified in your homework. Remember I told you, as a result of your homework, you'll be able to follow the lesson effectively. To delve into the characteristics of pre-colonial states and kingdoms, it's important for us to highlight that these pre-colonial states and kingdoms had both economic, political, and social characteristics. To begin with, we talk of leadership. In pre-colonial Cameroon, we had centralized and non-centralized kingdoms. And we equally had patrilineal and matrilineal succession systems. 
These are some political aspects that or that were characteristic of some of the pre-colonial states and kingdoms in Cameroon. In this respect, we look at we look at centralized states and kingdoms to say that these were state-like societies with structured political or centralized political institutions with traditional leaders or indigenous leaders who had supreme power or in some cases were paramount over certain groups who wielded divine rights like we talk of divine rights of kings these traditional rulers in certain cases were representative of the people and also the spiritual connect connection between the people and their ancestors and so in certain cases had the, the right over life we talk of succession patterns which were patrilineal and matrilineal patrilineal implied that succession was by the biological sons of a fallen king a deceased king whereas matrilineal succession like in the case of the people of Kong Agam Fungom implied succession was by the direct blood relations of the sister of the deceased the sister of the deceased like we see for example a beautiful grass field woman well dressed in her traditional regalia with her traditional bag and her insignia of power as a traditional authority it could be the wife of the ruler the queen mother the sister of or it actually represents royalty again we talk of centralized states and kingdoms like the Bafut, the Nso, the Bamu, and those and the Lami, that of the Adamawa area, which were actually structured like modern administrative systems we have today. We see the authority wielded by the Lamido of a centralized kingdom like the Lamidad of Ngaundiri. We see the Bafut Palace well structured to show you how authority was central. We see here the ancestor of the so to tell you how much how linked the traditional ruler or the rural traditional ruler play as a link between the people and the ancestors. These are some of the characteristics of centralized states and kingdoms like that of the Bafu, the Nso, the Bamu, and the various Lamidats in the northern part of the country. We equally had non-centralized states and kingdoms. We talk of acephalos or autonomous village which, or clan lineages which organized themselves democratically to designate leaders or heads within non-centralized communities we didn't have kings or the leaders didn't have divine rights and there was the absence of paramountcy or paramount rulers or in other words there was the absence of centralized leadership in this case, we had the Bakosi, who called their leader Keng, the Banyan, Foeto, the Ijagam, Tsuifam. These were different appellations given to indigenous leadership. In this respect, I would like you to observe this other document for one minute and establish the link between pre-colonial states and kingdoms and geographical regions or the various climatic zones of Cameroon. Observe 
this document of the geographical zones of Cameroon, after which you will establish a link between these geographical zones and the various states and kingdoms in pre-colonial Cameroon. Okay, we realize that as possible responses, we look at, when we look at the geographical zones of Cameroon, like we earlier on said, we have the Sahel, the savanna, the coastal forest, and the equatorial rainforest belt or zones of Cameroon, as depicted on the key. We have the dry savanna right up here. Now, what relationship exists between these different geographical zones? Coastal forest, southern or the equatorial forest, the grassland areas. If we take the example of a kingdom like the Bamiliki Kingdom, it is found in the western grassland zones of present-day Cameroon. We take the soil. It is found in the Bamenda grass field. The Bamum within the western grassland around this area. They come. They come within the Bamenda grass field. The so the Bamenda grass field. And even the north, the, Lami, the, the Laminas or the northern region of Cameroon are found within the grassland areas. So, in this respect, what connection can we make? We realize that the Bamilike, the So, the Bafut, the Bamun, the Kom, the, Lami, the Lamidas, and others which constitute principally centralized or state-like societies are found within the grassland areas of Cameroon. Are found within the grassland areas of Cameroon. I see my cursor blinking. Now, let's look at the Bakweri found within the coastal forest. The Fangbeti, the equatorial forest. The Bakosi, the Banyang, the Ijaga. The Fangbeti are found around the central and eastern zones of Cameroon within the equatorial forest. The Bakosi around the coastal forest. The Bayang around the coastal forest. The Ijaga around the coastal forest. Thus, with this in mind, we realize that while the centralized state-like societies are found within the grassland areas, the non-centralized states and kingdoms in pre-colonial Cameroon are found instead within the forest belt of Cameroon. Our exercise was to establish the link between the pre-colonial states and kingdoms and geographical regions of Cameroon. Thus, we can say that as a result of pre-colonial migrations in Cameroon, states and kingdoms which founded settlements within the grassland areas developed centralized and state-like societies. Whereas those who finally settled within the forest areas, forest zones, 
developed, known, centralized societies. Thus, we see the interplay of geography in pre-colonial Cameroon and actual states and kingdoms that developed in pre-colonial Cameroon. In this respect, I would like you to have this. Finally, I would like you to take this homework. You will have again, since we are developing the connection between the geographical regions and states and kingdoms, I would like you to draw a map of pre-colonial Cameroon and situate on that map seven centralized pre-colonial states and kingdoms in their present location as of Cameroon today. Seven centralized pre-colonial kingdoms in their present locations in Cameroon today. To have developed this lesson, we mobilize resources from the various sources. We have a history of Cameroon since 1800 by Julius Vitongo. We had we consulted web sources like Google, Teacher's Guide, we consulted the Advanced Level History Pathfinder by Enel Botella Enel, uh, Advanced Level History Masterpiece by uh, Bison Takang Stephen. We also consulted uh, Cameroon History since 1800 and Advanced Level Approach by Tangwe and others like Piawi. <laughs> On a terre minga, ma terre nyum, on a terre ma jang, ma terre ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injubiayen, gani bana, ma terre mot, gani la kiri wa terre ndom, esetina, bia dinkido, mane tambia ninya ne injubiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike. Mane tambia niña ne injo biayen